A blessed morning, everyone. As always, it's a joy to share God's Word with you. Now, tomorrow is Feb 14. And since Valentine's Day, marami naman ang nakangiti. But at the same time, marami rin ang nakasimangot. Yung iba masaya at kinikilig because meron silang Valentine date at meron silang Valentine gift. Pero yung iba, alam nyo, malungkot. Alam nyo bakit? Hindi sila masaya? No, it's not because wala silang kadate. Hindi rin dahil wala silang gift na natanggap. Malungkot sila because butas na naman ang wallet nila for Valentine's. Now, seriously, I don't know how you feel during this Valentine season. Like it or not, Feb 14 is designated by many as that one day when people do grand gestures of affection. It's that one day of the year when people are expected to be extra sweet and extra romantic. In fact, even if there's a pandemic, a lot of restaurants are already fully booked. Flowers are extra expensive and streets are busier than usual. And if you go online, there are lots of suggestions on what you can give to your special someone. From Valentine cards, to Belgian chocolates, to matching clothes, to fine jewelry. Ang dami mong pwedeng pagpilian. Sa dami ng choices, hindi ka mauubusan. But of course, our culture tells us that the grander the gift, the better. Pag mas malaki raw ang gift, mas okay. Pag mas mahal ang regalo, mas maganda. No wonder so many people go to great lengths just to present the most extravagant gifts to their special someone. Now, out of curiosity, I googled what are some of the most lavish gifts ever given in the name of love. Ano ba yung mga pinaka extravagant presents ever given in history and the love stories behind such gifts? One such story involved Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. Now, if you don't know them, they were extremely famous actors especially in the 1960s. Together, they co-starred in 11 films, which includes the blockbuster movie Cleopatra, where they first shared the screen together. And while filming the said movie, the, the co-actors got romantically involved with each other, which started a whirlwind romance. You see, Burton was already a married man with two kids. As for Taylor, she was then married to her third husband. So si Richard Burton, kasal na, may asawa. Si Elizabeth Taylor, may asawa na rin. Pangatlong asawa niya na. But since hindi sila nagpapigil, they continued their affair. They divorced their respective partners and they got married in 1964. Naturally, the media feasted on their love story and dubbed their relationship as the marriage of the century. And their union was highlighted by lavish lifestyle and extravagant gifts. Perhaps the most famous of these opulent gifts is the pear-shaped 69-carat diamond given by Burton to Taylor. Now, the story was, nagbabakasyon lang sila sa Switzerland when there was an auction for the said diamond. And knowing how much Elizabeth Taylor loved jewelry, Richard Burton thought of buying the diamond at $1.1 million. Now, at that time, that amount was even higher than the record-setting auction price for that same diamond. So, mas mahal pa yung binayad niya sa kaysa doon sa auction price. Now, you can just imagine how much that same diamond would cost today. The diamond was so big that it weighed almost 14 grams. 
it was too heavy to wear as a ring. So Taylor commissioned an 80,000 diamond necklace, which included a custom setting for the diamond. So pinagawa na lang yun ng pang necklace kasi sobrang bigat. Grabe yung pagka-extravagant ng gift. Now, one would expect that such kind of romantic gesture would surely yield a happy ending, right? Well, five years after Burton gave Taylor that diamond, the couple divorced in 1974. And while they did reconcile in 1975, so nag-reconcile sila, and they remarried each other, kinasal sila uli, that marriage only lasted for a year. They divorced again in 1976, and di na uli sila nagkabalikan. Richard Burton went on to marry two other women before he died in 1984. While Elizabeth Taylor had three more husbands after her failed marriage with Richard Burton. So all in all, Elizabeth Taylor had eight marriages and seven husbands because she married Burton twice. Now, as for that 69 karat diamond, ano ba lang yari dyan? Well, after her second divorce from Burton, she sold the diamond to a jeweler for more than $3 million. Siguro iniisip ni Burton, sana Valentine card na lang ang binigay niya kay Elizabeth Burton. Now, after today, wala na siguro sa mga lalaki dito ang magbibigay ng diamond sa mga ladies. Moissanite or carbon zirconium na lang daw, just in case things go south. At least hindi ganun kasakit sa bulsa, di ba? Truth is, wala namang problema if you decide to give your special someone an expensive gift. Wala namang problema doon. Or if you want to dream of receiving an extravagant treat and surprise from your partner. Wala rin problema doon. But I do believe that we should aspire for higher relationship goals than this. After all, healthy relationships are not gauged by the kind of gifts that we give and receive but on how well we handle adversity adversities along the way let me repeat that healthy relationships are not gauged by the gifts that we give but by the way we handle our differences the health of a marriage is not measured by how extravagant our gifts or dates are, but on how well we navigate through our conflicts and challenges. And so instead of aspiring for a relationship with more extravagant dates and gifts, it's better to aspire for a relationship that's able to resolve conflicts well. Yan dapat ang relationship goal natin. That should be our couple goals. Because the reality is, conflicts are inevitable. Conflicts are inevitable. Hindi maiwasan yan. In any relationship, conflict is a given. If you don't believe me, think of one couple who never had a conflict. If they never had a conflict, Baka hindi sila nag-uusap or they are truly involved in each other's lives. Kaya wala silang away. You see, conflicts in relationships are inevitable. Why? Because we live in an imperfect world filled with imperfect people. And as long as there are imperfect people in this world, conflicts are bound to happen especially in marriage. In fact, a study was done to identify how often do couples argue. Want to take a guess how often? Any guess? Well, according to the study, couples bicker 
an average of 2,455 times a year. Okay? Uh, do the math. Kung gano'ng karami yan. An average. In a survey that involved 3,000 people, the result yielded that couples argue as often as seven times a day. Take note, seven times a day. Now, I know yung iba sa inyo, hindi makarelate. You know why hindi sila makarelate? Kasi they argue more than seven times a day. Ganun katindi. But on the average, on the average lang tayo, the study shows that couples fight around seven times each day. Now, what do couples usually fight over? Here's just some of those that was mentioned in the study. Number one is not listening. Hindi nakikinig. Money, pera. Work or lack of work. In-laws, parenting, household chores. And syempre, hindi mawawala. Sex. Pinag-aawayan din yan ng mga mag-asawa. Yan yung mga nasa top ng list na pinag-aawayan. Oh, meron ba sa inyong nakaka-relate? You see, as long as we live with imperfect people, conflicts are inevitable. Inevitable. Especially in marriage where we've made the vow to journey together through life till death do us part. In fact, it is said that there are three kinds of rings you have to prepare for when you plan to get married. Three kinds of rings you have to prepare for when you plan to get married. Alam nyo ba yung three kinds of rings na in marriage? Well, the first kind of ring is what we call the engagement ring. Yung engagement ring. Now, after that comes the second kind of ring, which is the wedding ring. Yung wedding ring. Pagkatapos ng wedding ring, comes the third kind of ring, which is the suffering. Suffering. Now, thankfully, thankfully, not every couple has to endure that third kind of ring. Ayun naman natin noon, nung suffering. While conflicts are ultimately unavoidable, it doesn't mean that our relationships have to suffer, suffer all the time. While conflicts are ultimately unavoidable, it doesn't mean that our relationships have to suffer all the time because there are healthy ways in resolving conflicts. Godly ways of fighting to avoid unnecessary suffering. And so the big question for us today is, how do we resolve conflicts in a healthy way? What should we do when we are at odds with our partner? How can we move forward in life when we are not on the same page with our spouse? Whether you are single, dating, married or unmarried, how can you navigate through life or how can we navigate through our differences in a godly manner? Well, today, as sabi nga ni Grant, we are continuing with our message series called Together. And if you just joined us this morning, we're actually looking at the kind of relationship goals that we should all prioritize. Together, we are making four commitments that I believe can fail-proof our marriage and improve our relationships. Now, last week, we made the commitment to seek God as our number one. We agreed that as couples, we would pray together every day. And I praise God for what he just shared, for what Grant just shared earlier. Together with his wife, they have been intentionally seeking God in prayer, and they've been blessed with this newly developed habit. And naka-bless Grant, ah, yung shinare mo kanina. Thank you for being transparent. Thank you 
for being so open. And nakaka-bless on ano lang pwedeng gawin ni God. And imagine, pag tinuloy-tuloy pa natin yan, grabe yung pwedeng gawin ni Lord. No? Ang grabe yung gagawin ni Lord. And I pray that more of us here will really invest in this habit with our two. Kasi we learned last week that God is our one, our spouse is our two. So if hindi nyo pa nasusubukan to pray together, it's not too late to start. Let's seek God together through prayer. Now for singles, start praying for your future partner and the married couples around you. So seek God together. Today, we're going to talk about fighting fair. Fighting fair. We're going to learn how to fight fair. Because here's the thing. While all couples will fight, not every couple fights fair. Ulitin ko yun, ha? While all couples fight, not every couple fights fair. Marami, when they fight, they hit below the belt. Their intention is to win the fight at all costs, regardless of the damage inflicted against others. So, daming low blows, daming undercut. As long as they end up having the upper hand, it doesn't matter how they get there. Para sa kanila, okay lang, basta manalo sila. Remember the study I mentioned earlier about couples arguing on average seven times a day and 2,400 plus times in a year? Well, according to that same study, when couples argue, usually a war of words generally follow. Pag nag usually may mga maanghang na salitang nabibitawan. Nagbabangayan, nagsusumbatan. Especially if both are spewers. Remember the spewers? These people, they spew out angry words. Now, kung may isa, stewer, tapos yung spewer, yun ang naglalash out. While yung stewer, the other person lets the anger stew and simmer inside. So, pwede rin ganun yung dynamics. May spewer, spew ng spew, na maahang ng salta. Yung sa stew ng stew. No? Sa loob kumukulo. Either way, hindi pa rin healthy. Sadly, the same study also reveals that one-third of the respondents admit they follow a verbal attack by crashing and banging their way around the house. In Tagalog, nagdadabog. Hindi lang sila nagpapalitan ng maanghang na salita, may kasama pang pagdarabog. And you and I are not strangers to this. You and I can relate because we've personally witnessed such kind of arguments, whether in our own household or with those we interact with. I'm sure lahat tayo naka-witness na ng ganitong klaseng mga pag-aaway at ganitong klaseng mga conflicts. And so, the issue is not whether we will fight or not. It's not an issue whether we'll fight or not kasi given na eh. Conflicts are inevitable. The issue is whether we'll fight fair or we'll fight foul and dirty whether we'll pursue reconciliation at all costs or we'll pursue winning regardless of the damage we inflict. In fact, there's an interesting study by a guy named Dr. John Gottman. He's a well-known marriage specialist. Ang dami niyang libro, ang dami niyang contributions to the field of marriage. And for 16 years, he studied couples and studied how they fight. And now, he can watch a couple for only 5 minutes and he can already determine within 90 plus percent accuracy whether this couple will make it or if this 
couple will divorce. Sa kakaaral niya ng mga couples and how they fight, no, kabisado niya na. Within those five minutes, it depends on how they fight, he can determine if this couple will make it or if they will divorce. How? Because it's all directly related on how couples fight. It's not if couples fight, but it's how they fight. That's why today we are going to make a commitment to seek God and fight fair. To seek God and fight fair. And our anchor verse today is found in James 1 verses 19 to 20. And the principles we'll see here are actually applicable, not just inside the marriage, but in all of our relationships. Let's all read James 1, 19 to 20. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Ulitin natin. Let's all read this together. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, the author of this verse is James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Now, why half-brother? Well, because while James and Jesus sh shared the same mother, both were sons of, well, both of them were sons of Mary and Joseph, Jesus wasn't biologically Joseph's son. If you remember your Christmas story, Mary was a virgin when she conceived through the Holy Spirit and eventually gave birth to Jesus. So technically speaking, half-brother ni Jesus si James. Now, after Jesus died, resurrected and ascended to heaven, James became an important leader in the early church. James wrote this letter to Jewish Christians scattered across the region because of persecution. And the purpose of James' writing was to remind the believers that their belief should always translate in their behavior. Yung belief nila dapat mag-translate sa behavior nila. And regardless of the hardships they were in, James encouraged them to persevere and guard their testimony. If you have the chance to read the rest of James' letter, you'll see that it's quite easy to read and understand. The book of James is actually considered as the Proverbs of the New Testament because of how the letter was written. It's composed of many wise sayings and practical instructions on how true believers should behave. So, para siyang Proverbs. And that's what we'll see this morning. Three practical things we need to practice if we are to fight fair. Verse 19 tells us that we should be quick to listen, we should be slow to speak, be slow to become angry. In other words, in order to fight fair, we must listen more, talk less, and keep calm. Listen more, talk less, and keep calm. Can we all say this together? Listen more, talk less, and keep calm. Let's zoom into each of these. First, we are to listen more. Now, I don't know about you, but to listen well is easier said than done. While we all know that we need to listen more, many of us don't do a good job in this area. In fact, pagdating sa list ng mga bagay na pinag ng couples, guess what's on top? Number one on the list is not listening. 
according to research, we spend between 70 to 80% of our day engaged in some form of communication. And about 55% of our time is devoted to listening. So, may kalakihan, 55% of our time each day is devoted to listening. Now, how much of what we hear is absorbed? Most people only remember about 17 to 25% of the things they listen to. 17 to 25%. No? Yun lang yun naalala. So, mga one-fourth to one-fifth, yun lang naalala natin. Now, sa tingin nyo, who are better when it comes to listening? Men or women? Well, research shows that men only use half their brain to listen, while women engage both lobes. And so, if you constantly feel like your significant other is tuning you out, now, alam mo na kung bakit. Okay? Yung mga misis dyan, no? nakikita ko na, mm, sama na mga tingin sa asawa nila. Now, these statistics shouldn't be used as an excuse for us to stay with the status quo. Yung iba kasi sasabihin, oh, kita mo na, sabi sa research, this is only my capacity to listen. So, huwag kang magagalit if hindi ako nakikinig. Eh, ito lang kaya kong maalala. These data are general observations, but not gospel truths. For example, between my wife and I, she would readily agree that ako ang listener sa aming dalawa. I confirmed this last night. No? Kinong ko siya. And sabi niya, ako raw yung mas nakikinig. So dalawa lang yung posibleng ibig sabihin nito. Either I use both of my brain lobes as I listen, or she uses less than half of her brain when she listens. Whichever it is, it only shows that we shouldn't be complacent with our listening skills. There are a lot of things we can do to improve in the way we listen. Starting with the removal of distractions. Kasi ang hirap makinig pag maraming distractions. We're so used to multitasking that we hardly focus when we listen. Pag may nagsasarita, Sinasabayan natin, may cellphone pa, may sinusulat tayo, diba? yung screen natin, ang daming nakabukas, tapos nakipag-usap tayo, yung utak pa natin sa ibang lugar. For us to listen more, we need to identify and remove those hindering our ability to hear well. James said, everyone should be quick to listen. Now, as essential a skill as listening may be when it comes to human relationships, it's even more important that we listen well when it comes to our spiritual lives. That we are quick to listen when it comes to our spiritual lives. You see, when James wrote this verse, hindi naman niya sinulat ito specifically for husbands and wives. Instead, it's a generic instruction for all believers to be swift when it comes to listening, especially to God's Word. As followers of Christ, we need to listen more to God's truths. We need to be receptive, sensitive, ready to take God's truths. In other words, we need to sharpen both our physical ears in our spiritual ears. If we are to fight fair, then we need to be receptive of God's timeless truths. The Bible is rich, rich with instructions on how we are to relate with one another. And we'll be missing out on divine wisdom if we just rely on our own knowledge or on psychology books to address our relational issues. Tapat kay God tayo nakikinig ultimately. And if may nakikinig tayo kay God, I'm sure tutulungan niya tayong makinig sa ibang tao. Take Proverbs 18 verse 2 for example. It says, 
a fool finds no pleasure in understanding but delights in airing his own opinions. If we are going to be honest, most of us delight in airing our own opinions. Many times when we feel provoked, we don't really care what the other person is saying. We're more concerned on making sure that we are the ones being heard. And that's what we often do in fights. We're not trying to understand the other person. We just want to make our point, to get our message across. Hindi na nga tayo nakikinig na mabuti, mahilig pa tayong mag-interrupt. And scripture says we are foolish when we do that. We just want to win. We're actually not fighting fair. We are being foolish whenever we jump to assumptions and fail to listen well. Now, when I say listen well, it's not just merely listening to the words being uttered, but more so on the heart behind those words. Because many times, when hindi tayo nakikinig, we miss out on what we are really arguing about in the first place. Sa dami nangyayari, kasi hindi tayo nagpipay attention, tapos gusto pa nating sumagot, sumabat, nawawala kung ano ba talaga yung pinag Ano ba talaga yung issue? And so let me share with you some things I've learned in my counseling class in seminary that can be very helpful to us when it comes to listening. You see, when we are in an argument, what we should do is we should repeat back to the other person what was just said. And what it does is it forces us to listen. So kung ano sinabi ng kausap mo, kung kaya mo i-repeat or i-paraphrase, makakatulong yun kasi it forces us to listen. It validates to the other one sharing that he or she has actually been heard. But syempre in a calm and sincere manner. No? You can say, okay, so what you're saying is this, and then you repeat it back. And what that, what that does is it keeps focus on the issue at hand rather than escalating it. Kaysa saan saan mapunta conversation, we can repeat back what was just said. The next step is to validate the other person's feelings. Now, even though you may be upset, you can minister to the other person by validating his or her feelings. What you do is you repeat back what was said and then you can validate each other's feelings by saying, I understand why you feel this way when I do this or when I say this. You don't necessarily have to agree with the issue, but you can validate the feelings behind. So what you're saying is, when I did this, uh, tapos i-repeat back mo what was said, it made you feel neglected, you feel undervalued. Tama ba? So clear, clear, clear? Uh, one more thing to help us listen well. Aside from repeating and validating the feelings, uh, repeating what was said, validating the other person's feelings, one thing, one thing that can help us listen well is to ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. Now, don't ask questions that are only answerable by yes and no. Huh? And so, so tama ba? Galit ka? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obvious naman, galit na nga. No? Tatay mo pa, oh, galit ka. Uh, so, gusto mo ba mag-sorry ako? <laughs> Siyempre, di ba? Dapat open-ended. Dapat open-ended. For example, you can ask, Para sa'yo, how would you want me to do things differently? Or, I would like to know, saan ka ba exactly hindi natutuwa? Okay, so, it gives the person the chance to elaborate and to express and papafeel mo na, ah, okay, ready ka makinig. But of course, importante yung attitude tsaka yung demeanor. No? Baka yan nga yung sinasabi mo, pero <laughs> nakataas yung kilay mo, di ba? <laughs> so, or pagalit. Yeah, or sarcastic. Hindi pwedeng ganon. You see, when we repeat 
when we validate and when we ask properly, what we're doing is we're making ourselves listen more to what is being said. So all of these are exercises to help us listen more. Mapuesta tayo kasi hindi sa nai. No, pag inuulit mo, bida validate mo, nagaas ka pa. And we want to focus on dealing with the problem rather than just letting the issue get buried somewhere because of our inappropriate behavior. Clear? You see, conflicts are inevitable. And as followers of Christ, we need to fight fair. Starting by listening more. We must sharpen our physical ears as well as our spiritual ears. Let's repeat, validate, and ask. But in order to fight fair, we also need to talk less. We need to talk less. Anong kailangan natin gawin? We need to talk less. Let's read again James 1 verse 19. James said, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. We should be slow to speak. Ang hindi ibig sabihin, dapat mabagal tayo magsalita. Na ganitong mabagal ha. Mas lalong magagalit yung kausap natin. But instead, we are to listen more and talk less. Again, this is easier said than done. Through the years, I've held on to the belief that ladies speak more than men do. In fact, may narinig ako. Ay, marami sa inyo, mungingiti. No? A chance naman ng mga lalaki bumawi. <laughs> In fact, may narinig akong presentations before saying that women average around 20,000 words a day while men average around 7,000 a day. No? no wonder may disconnect. No? Kaya lang alam nyo, according to Time Magazine, a study was done in 2007 and According to that study, it found that women and men use roughly the same number of words a day. For the ladies, around 16,215 words. Compared to men, 15,669 daw. So, hindi pala necessarily true na mas madaldal ang ladies. In fact, lately, mas marami pang studies ang nagpapakita nito. Yung 20,000 tsaka yung 7,000, those figures came from self-help books which don't have cited resources. Pero ito, para actual studies to. So, hindi pala necessarily true na mas maldaldal ang mga babae. Parehas lang palang madaldal. Pumipili lang si Mister kung kailan siya magsasarita at sino kinakausap niya. The point is, most of us like to talk. And many times, we say things that are not necessarily healthy. Especially during heated arguments and fights. We utter words that contribute to the detriment of our relationships. Listen to what Proverbs 21 has to say. In verse 9, it says, Better to live on a corner of the roof then share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Dahil pala sinama natin to doon sa series natin na better, no? One whole week devoted to this verse. Mas mabuti pa raw ang tumira sa bubong. Sa kanto ng bubong, hindi lang pala bubong, kanto lang, doon sa edge. Kaysa tumira sa isang bahay na may misis na nagger and pala away. Mga husbands, oh. Kinakapi na yung verse na sambayan, no? And then later in verse 23, it says, Those who guard their mouths and their tongues will keep themselves from calamity. If ayaw mong madisgrasya ng wala sa oras, we better learn to control our tongue. We need to guard our mouth and watch our speech. Now, how do we exactly do that, especially during a heated argument? Well, we need to force ourselves to ask ourselves two questions. 
we need to ask ourselves two questions. First, ask yourself, should it be said? Kailangan ba talaga sabihin? If the answer is no, then don't say it. Because you can't take back your words. Kung wala namang benefit, hindi naman maganda, wala namang itutulong, huwag mo nang sabihin. Nag-argue na nga kayo, may sasabihin ka pang something na hindi makakatulong. The next question you need to ask yourself is, should it be said now? Ngayon ba dapat sabihin? Kasi yes, there are some important things that need to be said. Siguro may mga ibang issues, may ibang problema. But maybe this is not the best timing because you're still in the middle of a fight. Hindi nyo pa nga naaayos yung isang problema, dadagdagan mo pa ng panibagong issue. Pwede naman pag-usapan yung ibang issues on a different occasion once you've resolved your current conflict. In the meantime, stay focused on the issue at hand and fight fair to work toward a resolution on that one issue. Now, what are some examples of things that shouldn't be said? Well, for starters, bawal ang name-calling and insults. Words like, baboy ka, mataba, pangit, tamad, bobo. These things should never be said. Wala siyang magandang maitutulong. Also, we shouldn't use the words never and always. No. This is one of the fastest ways to be offensive because never and always are just rarely true. You never listen to anything I say. You always think of yourself and no one else. Lagi ka na lang ganyan. Lagi, parate. Never mo itong ginawa. Hindi ka na nagbago. Don't use never and always when we are arguing. We also shouldn't be historical. Don't get historical. I remember 10 years ago, sabi mo sa akin, mataba ako. Hindi ko pa rin nakakalimutan yun. Don't go there. No, panag-aaway kayo. Huwag mo na. Tapos na yun eh. We're not keeping scorecards. Stick to the main issue at hand. Now, also, we should never threaten to leave. Huwag kang mananakot na lalayas ka or makikipaghiwalay ka. Don't do that. Low blow yun. Remember your marital vows. With God as your witness, you made a covenant to stick through thick and thin till death do you part. So don't resort to that below the belt threat and tactic. Walang ganunan. There's nothing good that will come from that. And finally, when you're in a fight, never quote your pastor. Don't say, sabi ni Pastor Don, ha? dapat ganyan. Ha? Oh, ayan, tingnan mo, tingnan mo. Oh, sabi ni Pastor Don, hindi pwede yan. Please lang, leave me out of your fight. Hindi ako kasali dyan. The other person might end up having a beef with me because you keep on name dropping me. Kayo pumasok dyan. Iso nyo, huwag nyo ko isali. Okay? So, should it be said? Should it be said now? Don't say these things. Instead, we all need to fight fair. As followers of Christ, we must listen more. Repeat, validate, and ask. And then we also need to talk less. Pasalitaan mo muna yung kausap mo. Then guard your mouth and guard your tongue. And then finally, if you're taking notes, write this down. In order to fight fair, we must keep calm. We must keep calm. James said, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, we've already learned before that to be angry is not necessarily a sin. In fact, we've studied before passages that show God being angry with sin. And sabi natin na tama lang na angry si God. Because it's the appropriate response to unrighteousness. Kasi kung merong mali, dapat talaga magalit si God. Alam mo, mas naging matuwa siya. In the same way tayo rin, pwede namang magalit. 
as long as it is in the form of righteous anger. Pag ganun, okay lang. For example, dapat ba happy tayo if our partner is involved in extramarital affairs? Obviously, hindi. Natural lang na magalit tayo because hindi tama yun. It violates our marital vows and that shouldn't be ignored. So, natural lang and na magalit kapag may mali. But we do, we do need to understand that in our anger, we don't have to sin. We don't have to sin. Kahit galit tayo, we can choose to keep calm. Hindi dapat tayong mag-react. Otherwise, our human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, obviously, hindi rin ito madali. Let's all read Proverbs 29 verse 11. It says, Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. Even when we are upset, we need to exercise wisdom and keep our calm. Now, how do we do this? Well, let me share what I've learned from another pastor, something that has helped me greatly when I'm angry. Sabi niya, when you are angry, you need to pray. You need to pray. Pray as in P-R-A-Y. Oh, P stands for pause. Pag galit ka, ang una mong dapat gawin is to pause. Pause ka muna. Don't react, but slow down and pause. If you want to do breathing exercises to calm down, pwede rin. But don't do anything impulsively. In fact, hindi ka lang dapat mag-pause. You should also do R. And that stands for resist. Resist your initial impulse. Whether that's to retaliate, uh, interrupt, or fight back, you need to resist that temptation to react. Kalma lang. And what helps you do that is you do A, which stands for Ask. Ask for God's help. Recognize that by your own power, hindi mo kaya not to react. Kasi tao lang nga eh, di ba? Imperfect tayo. So ask God to help you be calm, to help you listen more, and to help you talk less. And then finally, you should do why, which stands for yield. You see, we ultimately need to yield to the Holy Spirit. This means submitting to whatever the Holy Spirit wants us to do. We let the Holy Spirit be in charge of our response. We surrender to Him our emotions, our thoughts, our actions. And we only say what He wants us to say and we only do what He wants us to do. Which also covers our non-verbal expressions. Because pwede mo ang sabihin, you talk less but you keep on rolling your eyes or my unwanted expressions and gestures kang ginagawa like pouting, crossing your arms, or again, nagdarabog. Again, that's fighting dirty. Wala dapat ganyan. In our anger, we need to keep calm and pray. We need to pause, resist, ask, and yield. Claro? Claro. Friends, tomorrow is Valentine's Day again. And marami na naman ang nakangiti. At marami rin ang nakasimangot. I hope we are part of those na, na nakangiti. Not because of the romantic dates and gifts that we have, but because we are moving forward with our healthy relationship goals. After all, healthy relationships are not gauged by the gifts that we give, but by the way we handle our differences. And since conflicts are inevitable, we have to start fighting fear. We must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Listen more, talk less, 
and keep calm. May we all have a blessed heart's day. Let us pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give hope to each one of us today. May you give healing to those who are hurting and would you bring restoration in relationships that are struggling. As we all continue to pray, whether you're married, whether you're not married, all of us have challenges in relationships at one time or another. And those of you who would say, Yes, Lord, I want to be more godly in how I handle conflicts. I want to listen more. I want to talk less. I want to keep calm. Would you just lift up your hand right now before God? None of, none of us here can actually see your hand, but God sees your hand. And those of you who lifted your hands, let me pray for you. Father, I pray that your word be planted deep into our hearts. I pray that you would start to work in us. And Lord, help us not to react in the flesh. That we would respond by your spirit. And Lord, I especially pray for those who are married that where there has been sin, there would be forgiveness. God, where there's bitterness, would there be healing? God, I pray especially for those that who feel that they're on the edge and can't make it anymore. Lord, I pray that somehow in your presence, through your word and by your spirit, you would give them hope that all things are possible. And God, we commit to seek you and we commit to fight fair for our marriage and for your glory. Now, as we keep praying today, we need to understand that the reason life is such a battle is we live in a sinful world. It's a messed up world because of sin. And we're messed up because we're sinners. And our sin, it leads us to do ungodly things. That's why we fight. That's why we have all of this. It's because of the sin in us. But here's what God did for us. God, in His infinite love and in His infinite mercy, engaged in the ultimate fight when He sent Jesus who was born of a virgin and without sin. Jesus became sin for us. Jesus did fight with our spiritual enemy on the cross. He shed His blood, He died, and He rose again so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be saved, so that we can be transformed, so that we can experience His goodness and His grace. If you haven't experienced this in your life, it's time that you surrender yourself to Him. You can pray to Him, Father, I recognize that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for all my sins. I recognize that I need a Savior who can rescue me from all my sins and fight on my behalf. I believe that Jesus died for me. He rose again so I could live for you. Fill me your spirit so I could serve you for the rest of my life. My life is no longer my own as I give it to you. I thank you for the new life you've promised to everyone who believes in you. I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen.